Hi, good morning, guys. Welcome, as always, back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. If you are new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name is Tristan Mortlock. This is Captain's Vlog. You join me on the bridge deck here on board Motor AWOL. Uh, we left Genoa in Italy yesterday evening around 5, 6 p.m. It is now 7.30 a.m. Having my morning tea and you join me on the Yacht Express, so which is a yacht transporter. And we're on our way to Fort Lauderdale in Florida, USA. So I thought I'd take this moment to enjoy the sunrise and give you guys a bit of a tour of all the different yachts, what's, hap what's happening on board the ship here. We're gonna go on the decks. I wanna show you how they fast the yachts to the, uh, to the deck of the ship. I'll quickly show you what I'm talking about here in case you don't know what I'm talking about. So we are on a yacht transporter. We've got a few super yachts here. And just to give you a better view, we'll go upstairs and then you can see what it's like here on board. There we have it. So there's about um, 12 motor yachts on board and about eight or nine tenders or chase boats and a lot of questions i'm getting is why are we using a yacht transporter to cross to fort lauderdale rather than crossing on under our own steam so the first thing is is that uh, motor yacht awol is not classed as unlimited under our um, flag and class, we have a limitation of 150 nautical miles from a safe haven. Reason number two is that AWOL does not have the range or the ability to cross over to the USA. Now, some vessels do you, that are capable of crossing over that do have an unlimited class, they choose to come on dockwise. And you may ask, well, why would you choose to come on uh, you know, dockwise, the yacht transporter, rather than going under your own steam. Number of reasons really. One, you are reducing wear and tear on your particular vessel. Two, it gives the crew the opportunity to have a, a break and a, and a rest between the Mediterranean season and the Caribbean season. Three, whilst we're on dry dock, if the engineers and crew do stay on board, it gives an opportunity to do some work, whether it be you know polishing, cleaning, engineering work, interior work, it's almost like a dry dock period. Um, the cost overall, a question I'm gonna get, the cost, I can't really disclose the cost of this, but it is. it really depends on how you look at it from the long-term point of view. There are pros and cons to both. The other thing as well is if you get caught out in bad weather, you'd much rather be on a big ship like this. It's gonna be more stable than a smaller yacht, say AWOL under its own steam. So before we go down on the deck, we're gonna make our way to the <coughs> superstructure of the ship, get a bit of internet, you know, check some uh, emails and messages, and then we'll head down to the decks and give you guys a bit of a tour. Oh. Oh. All right, so this is our walk to the superstructure. Look at that sunrise. Beautiful. All the yachts. So the reason we've got to go to the superstructure is because on A, well, we don't have VSAT, so that's like internet. We only run a 4G SIM card. So if we're out of 4G range, which we are, uh, we don't get internet. So the ship has a VSAT system so we just hook up to theirs and then we can get our um, emails and messages and whatnot. So if you see all the water outlets here, 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 what they're from is they hook seawater inlet to all the yachts, all the riders, and these are the outlets. And the reason they need seawater is to um, operate their air conditioning so they can put the seawater through the condensers and then um, 
cause the you know cause the creates the cooling and then the the uh, unwatered water that gets discharged it's only seawater getting pumped through the system and there in the wild is the chef checking his messages morning chef is it working the wi-fi or not How's that for a view? We're gonna to go to the uh, swim platform and then head down the ladder. Right, so the question is, how does it work? So essentially what happens, the, the ship sinks down okay all the yachts come in in our case when we come in we tie alongside here then the yachts in the middle tie alongside um, the other yachts on either side of, of the ship then what happens once we're all in and we're tied up is the load master will ask all the vessels to go dead ship once all vessels are dead ship the divers then go down and you can see they start putting all the keel blocks in place. They got wooden blocks all the way along the keel, which will support the structure of the yachts, strength of the yachts. Then what they do, they put one or two of these side supports in while it's underwater. And once they've, they've blocked all the yachts, they then start draining. Um, once they start draining a bit by bit, then they do the tenders because the tenders have less draft. Then the tenders get blocked and then they drain the entire deck, so dry deck. From there, what happens then is then they start all the welding process. So they put all the supports which are in place. You can see they've welded here to the deck. And that's for all the vessels. There's a lot of welds. Once they finish the welding of all the support structures, they then want to strap the vessels down to the deck. So you can see additionally, they put welds on these D-rings and they strap it to the, the, the cleats or the bits of the yacht. So that secures all the vessels in place. Okay, once that's done, as you can see, we've got a couple of hoses coming out here. So this hose here is our seawater outlet. Okay, so you can see that's continuously flowing and that's going over the board of the ship. All that is, is seawater, okay? The other pipe is our seawater inlet, which is this pipe here. So the seawater goes in through the condensers of the air conditioning, cools the system down, and then this is the water that comes out, which is obviously gonna be a bit warmer, okay? Here we have our black and gray pipe which is you know uh so gray water essentially like shower water dishwasher washing machine water and that goes over the side as well black water is essentially sewage okay so the way it works under marpole uh, you, is that uh, when you're so we're doing atlantic crossing we're more than 12 miles out we can you can um, discharge your gray and black water as long as you're moving more than four knots and we're cruising about 12 13 knots at the moment so that's how it looks on the deck. Give you guys a bit more of a tour. We'll walk her around here. So you can see a bit more what it's like here. It's like a maze actually. See all the welds. So the vessels are nicely secure here. And on the bow you see all the keel blocks. Now show you where we connect our seawater inlet from. So this is the main seawater. So the ship has a pump and it'll pump the seawater from the sea through this valve here into this divider here, which splits up where we've got well two connected. One is ours, one is another vessels. And then slightly above here, this is our fresh water hose. So as mentioned earlier, the ship makes its own um, fresh water through uh, reverse osmosis. So we're going to be here for two weeks. So I think we'll end the video there. Uh, really do hope you enjoyed 
this video. I'm gonna do these kind of uh, videos now, I think almost every day while on the trip. I think I've answered most questions from the previous video. If you have any other questions, uh, do let me know. But before you ask, please watch the previous episodes first, because uh, I may have already answered those questions. Uh, so I don't wanna keep repeating myself. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. See you and ciao.